Welcome to the Crestron Home Lighting Control Design, Layout, and Hardware video. In this segment, we will cover design considerations for lighting controls in a luxury condo. We will layer the technology onto the floor plans, including lighting loads, switched loads, dimming panel, local dimmers, low voltage keypads, and a touchscreen. A wiring diagram detailing all required equipment will be reviewed, as well as the actual equipment we will be commissioning. From discussions with the homeowner, we understand that this project will have a few locally wired loads. In the event of a processor malfunction, the ability to control select locally wired lighting loads is desired. The remaining lighting loads will be centrally wired back to a dimming enclosure. There are a few Crestnet keypads in the living room and master bedroom, as well as a touch screen in the main area. Let's start layering our technology onto the plans. The first lighting load will be the exterior front. The second lighting load will be the foyer. The third load is the exhaust fan in the master bathroom. The fourth lighting load is the lights in the master bathroom. We will continue to lay out the remaining lighting loads 5 through 9, which will all be controlled by a dimming module in the equipment room. A project like this one in real life would likely have at least twice as many lighting loads, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we kept things simple. We will place the main dimming enclosure in the equipment room. The first area with locally wired lighting controls will be the foyer with a two gang pair of horizon dimmer. These dimmers will control the front exterior light and the foyer light. The left dimmer directly wired to the exterior front light will be configured as a five button keypad with one button dedicated to local control. The other area with locally wired controls will be the master bathroom with a two-gang Cameo setup. The left Cameo is a switch controlling the exhaust fan, while the Delvex dimmer on the right controls the light and is configured as a four-button keypad. As for Crestnet low-voltage keypads, the Cameo-style keypad will be placed in the living room. The Horizon-style keypad will be located in the master bedroom. The touchscreen will be located in the foyer kitchen dining area. Now that we have a design concept layered onto the floor plan, let's talk about the Crestron hardware necessary to implement our design. This wiring diagram details the equipment needed to implement our design. For starters, we have the MC4R processor, the smaller of the two Crestron Home processors. MC4R can handle 100 lighting loads and 50 shades. The CP4R is the larger Crestron Home processor, and that can handle 300 lighting loads and 100 shading loads. We also have a miniature PoE switcher with one input and four outputs. One of the outputs goes to the Ethernet to Crestnet bridge located at the bottom of the cane enclosure. Segment one from this device communicates with the dimming modules. Segment two from this device controls up to 20 keypads. Another output from the mini PoE switcher 
goes to the DIN Ethernet to CrestNet bridge. Typically, this device is used when there are greater than 20 keypads on a system, and in some cases, a separate DIN rail enclosure is dedicated entirely for keypad control. As you can see, it's supplemented by a 60 watt DIN rail power supply to support all of the keypads. The Cameo style keypad in this case is wired to the DIN rail Ethernet to CrestNet bridge. Another output goes to the touch panel. And the final output goes to the MC4R processor. Since we have maxed out our mini PoE switcher, yet we still have a shade power supply to support, we've decided to wire CrestNet straight from the processor into the shade power supply for communication. The MC4R also has a built-in wireless gateway. The built-in wireless gateway is supporting our wireless Horizon and Cameo devices. Now let's review the physical hardware we will use for our deployment. On the right, you can see the switchboard with all our user interfaces, including the two gang horizon dimmers and two gang cameo devices. Here is the antenna extension wire that comes off the MC4R and the CEN SW POE5, the miniature POE switcher, and the input coming from the network switch. Outputs to processor, to Ethernet to CrestNet bridge at the bottom, and to DIN rail Ethernet to CrestNet bridge at the top, with another CAT5E going to the touchscreen. As you can see, CrestNet communication is wired directly from the processor to the shade power supply. These wires at the bottom of the enclosure handle the dimmed loads controlled by the CLX 2DIMU8 dimming module. With this demo case, we have attempted to show the different methods of keypad management. If a centralized lighting system had 20 keypads or less, it's entirely likely they would be wired to the Kane Ethernet to CrestNet bridge at the bottom of this enclosure while up to 20 Cameo style keypads could be supported with PoE power of 20 watts maximum, a scenario with 20 Horizon keypads would require a supplemental power supply. Although the DIN Ethernet to CrestNet bridge at the top of this demo case is unnecessary here, the desire was to show a working example of the hardware typically used with a larger number of keypads. Thank you for watching.